Hi, I'd like to welcome you to a brief short game secrets.tv video. It's James Ridyard. I'm just going to run through um, a, a very quick short game analysis of a, a player. This is a lesson from a few weeks ago. Uh, fairly typical uh, club golfer, high single figures. Um, doesn't really like to use wedges around the green um, because they he tends to mishit them. Um, so often uses a 7 9 8 9 9 9, which is fine. Uh, but what it doesn't give you is the, the versatility you might need to get himself out of situations sometimes and isn't you know, given the best control over the ball um, all of the time. So he needs more variation in his game. So the swing on the left is the first one I asked him to hit with a wedge. Pretty short shot, maybe 15 yards. Um, and you see straight away the setup on the left is uh, what I call fairly typical you know, for, for most club golfers to be taught. They put the ball on the back foot, put the hands on the front foot, Loads of shaft lean in order to make sure you hit the ball first. Um, but the, the main issue with that is that it really gets rid of any bounce or any margin of error you might have in the shot. Uh, there's certainly no safety net. There's about 16 degrees of shaft lean on this. Uh, so even if he's got 10 degree bounce on the wedge, you know, he's got minus 6 straight away. So that leading edge becomes pretty sharp. Margin of error actually narrows. And you have to be very, very precise uh, to actually play this shot. Second point with the forward leaning shaft is that the ball comes off the face faster. Okay, there's less loft. Uh, smash factor goes up a little bit, and it comes off pretty hot. So if you're not prepared for that, you're going to be surprised by it, and the next ball you're probably going to swing slower. It's still going to go too far, and you're going to swing slower, and you end up mishitting it more. Then you put the ball further back in your stance, because you're mishitting it, and it comes off faster, and you slow down more. It's a kind of a vicious cycle that goes on. Okay, so first things first, that setup position is not something I like to see, and it's not going to help him out. You'll see why in a moment. I'm just going to run it through. Uh, going to get through to or down towards impact. And this is actually a thin shot, but this is a thin shot on the downswing. Okay, so he sees the ball come out thinning, or pretty low. Automatic assumption is that you're actually probably flipping at it, and the club is on its way up when you hit the ball. This couldn't be much further from the truth. You see the dots are placed, traveling down, 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 still traveling down all the way into the golf ball. Okay, and then there is not quite as much shaft lean as it was at the start, but it's still a little bit too much. And the club makes contact with the ground down here. Okay, so it is a thin on the downswing, yet he believes, or believed, that he was thinning because he was flipping. Okay, it can be further from the truth. And then the head moves forwards, the right shoulder continues to go downwards, and eventually the butt of the club reaches the yellow line I've placed there, um, which is pretty much where it started. Okay, so it's taken a little while to actually reach that point. Okay, let's just flip over to the right. Now this was maybe five minutes later, and you see I've adjusted the setup. I've actually gone with a, a same narrow stance, but the club's gone back. The ball location has gone forwards towards the sternum, and you're going to see the back swing is a little bit longer. Main reason for that is he actually stopped transferring quite so much energy to the golf ball and was able to be more aggressive with it. Okay, but the key points here. You come down. He's actually making an attempt to get the shaft back where it started from initially. Make sure the head stays stable, doesn't go forwards too much. And you'll see I've done the same thing with yellow dots. And it pretty much reaches his level before he hits the golf ball. And then the sweet spot travels at a pretty fairly level. There's going to be some amount of curve there. Obviously, there's a limited number of frames we've actually got in the video, so difficult to show, but you will see that it is more level of an attack than it was before. And the butt of the club is going to hit that yellow line much earlier. Okay, so the, the butter club is actually on its way up as the club is on its way down. Kind of essential to levelling off that strike. And you can see it gets more turned, more extended. And his head hasn't tipped back in order for him to actually pull the butt of that club up. Largely, the, the butter club has actually risen in the effort to line the shaft back up. There wasn't any need for him to pull the shoulder up you know, and try and extend his spine or legs or anything like that through the shot. The mere action alone of lining the shaft up somewhere near to where it started, pretty much bang on it, was enough to get the butt of the club going up and to level out the strike. Okay, nice trajectory, decent control, and the swing is going to be much longer. So a very similar length of shot, could do releasing the uh, neck and head a little bit. But that's not quite going to happen this time. Okay, so just a very quick run through on something I see fairly commonly: people setting up with the club in much too an, an aggressive position. Way too many steepening components going in there and a steep attack into the ball compared to much more of a level setup. And then the attempt to actually line the shaft back up, flatten out the approach into the ball, 
transfer less energy to it, which means he can be more aggressive. The more aggressive he is, the more chance there is that club is actually going to glide through whatever resistance it encounters. Okay, so he ends up with a pretty standard wedge shot and the confidence to go out, practice it, build on it, and uh, improve his army around the green. Thanks for watching.